What's up everybody? Welcome to the Dual Sport Disport YouTube channel. Today I have my Husqvarna FE501 engine completely torn down to the cases and I'm going to rebuild it from the bottom up. This will be applicable to model years, I believe, of the KTM 500 EXC 2012 to 19 and the Husqvarna FE501 2015 or 2014 to 2019, somewhere around there. The newer model has no Kickstarter, so the main difference is it won't have that. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. This might even be applicable to some of the later Husqvarnas, Husqvarna 510s. So yeah. The way this happened was I actually got sand into the engine from the crankcase vent, but I have another video on that, so I'll put a card up here about the top. This will be a pretty in-depth and detailed video, so stay tuned for the step-by-step -step process. The first thing I'm going to do is finish these bearings that I just pressed in. I have to put the retaining clips on and screw them down. They are a T25 Torx, and I'm going to use blue thread locker. Next thing I'm going to install is going to be the crankshaft, but before I do that, I'm going to oil all these bearings. It's important to have a little assembly oil while you're putting it together. Now, I did not take the crank apart. There are some special washers that you actually have to shim the crank with. However, I don't need to do that step because I just am using the old crank. It's fine. I had to do a disassembly on it. So if you are going to be messing around with your crankshaft, make sure you get those shims right. You're going to have to check the service manual for that part. Now, if you did not mess with the crankshaft, then it should just drop right in. So, let's see if it does. Perfect. Maybe just give it a spin, make sure it's seated all the way. For the next step, I moved it to the engine stand. If you don't have one of these, I would highly recommend one, although it's not required. It just makes it easier to get the transmission shafts in. I find that if you put them in at an angle or even you know, straight up and down is easier than having it completely horizontal because then sometimes the washers want to fall off. I have the transmission shafts here. Now there's a washer on this one here. This is the counter shaft. And there's a washer right here on, I believe it's the main shaft. I'm just going to slide those two in together, making sure that the washers stay in place and don't fall out. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is install the shift forks followed by the shift drum. There are two little springs on each side of this pin, so it's important to make sure that they don't get lost. Okay, the 
Engine case is ready to be installed. I have all the gears in place. What I'm going to do before I do that though is lubricate this up a little bit better, put some oil on it, make sure everything's rotating around like it should, and then last is to put some three bond adhesive all around the engine case and then put it together. Okay, so the cases are all together. I need to put the bolts in still, but I wanted to note that it's important that you don't use the bolts to actually force the cases together. Make sure you use a rubber mallet and lightly tap all the way around, and make sure you have a flush surface all the way around the case before you even put the bolts in. I have the cases all fastened together and properly torqued. The torque specs on those was 7.4 foot-pounds. Next, I'm going to install this countershaft snap ring. It goes right there. And then I'm going to move on to the shifter assembly. The first part of the shifter assembly, I'm going to install the locking lever. This is going to be an M5 millimeter bolt and it's going to be torqued to 4.4 foot pounds. Now it's important when you install this that you make sure that this spring is up on this side of the tab. So I got to kind of move it around. There we go. And I'm just going to run it down and torque it up. It is important that you use blue Loctite on that and make sure it doesn't come out. Next is going to be the shift drum locating unit. Now this thing is actually not symmetrical so it'll only go on one way and there's a small side and a little bit bigger side. Looks like on mine the small side is towards the bottom so I'm just going to pull this out of the way, set that on there. And then once I install the screw, it's going to be tightened to 7.7 .7 foot pounds. Now I'm using an inch pound torque wrench. So if you were to multiply that out, it'd be somewhere around 88 foot pounds, plus or minus a little bit. But yeah, so I'm gonna torque this down. Once this is in place, I'm going to install the shift shaft next. It's just going to slide into place. And then once you get it close, you actually got to pull on back on this. And there it is. And then you should be able to there, from there, shift through the gears. Okay, while I'm checking the shifting on this, it's important to have a little resistance on the counter shaft. It's kind of hard to do with, you know, just two hands, but you can do it. I'm going to start out in first gear here. First gear, I'm going to go up to neutral, second, there you go, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, all the way up. 
So all good to go. I'm going to downshift it again just to show you. Maybe I'll turn it at an angle. But it's very important if you are doing this job that the gears are checked before you put this thing all back together. So again, it's just a little resistance on the counter shaft. I'm in sixth. I'm going to go down to fifth. Down to fourth. Down to third. Down to second. Hopefully down to neutral. Neutral. Down to first. So good to go. Next I'm going to mount the primary gear and there is this gear behind it here. It goes to, I think the starter if I remember right. But I'm going to oil it up first and set it on. This just spins around and then I'm going to follow that up with a little more lube. And there is a wood rough key here. So I got to make sure of that. I'm going to lube this bearing up here. This is on the inside of the primary gear. Okay, once that's lubed up, I'm going to set this wood rough key in. I actually wiped the oil off here to make sure when it goes on there's no fluid trapped in between it so it's perfectly true and I'm not going to tighten it up just yet. Next I'm going to start with the oil pump assembly. The first thing is the shaft. It's going to go in from the other side so just going to reach around, get it in there, make sure it's lubed up. All right. On to the pump assembly. Next I'm going to do the pin. So it's going to go on the inside one. And I have the motor vertical again because I don't want it to anything to fall in those little cavities there. Now there's these two marks here. I'm going to face these towards the engine case. Try to make sure that lines up the first time. There we go. Make sure it's lubricated. Next is going to be the oil pump cover and there is an indication on here top. So that's going to go on there and it is going to get blue Loctite at 7.4 foot pounds. Next will be the pin, followed up by the oil pump gear. I don't like how they're plastic, but this is the oil pump gear itself. That's going to go on next. And then it is a washer and a snap ring. Might want to just look this over for any wear. I have heard of these things wearing out, and then it causes a loss of oil pressure. And then bad things happen. Next will be the starter idler gear and there is a curved side to these gears. I'm going to put that towards the back, towards the engine case. This is the oil pump idler gear. I'm not a big fan of how these gears are made out of plastic, but this thing just slides right on and then it's got a washer followed up by a snap ring. This is the torque limiter. It's going to slide right onto this engine case here. I'm putting a little lubrication on it. The bolt is going to get blue Loctite 
and the torque spec on this is 7.4 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the clutch assembly. I installed the clutch basket here already and the thing just drops into place. The clutch basket is really nice how lightweight it is for its size. It's a nice design. This is going to be followed up with a flat washer followed next by the inner clutch hub assembly. This is a two-part assembly and there is some rubber bushings in there so I just kept it all together. Once it's in place it's going to be secured with a special washer and a nut torqued to 59 foot-pounds. There is a little notch that this washer will sit into place at and once the nut is tightened up I'm going to fold the washer over using a pair of pliers. This side is almost done. I just have a few more things left with the clutch and I got to put this nut on there and then we can put the cover on. Next is these dowels that go into the clutch. They are just going to sit in place like so and then we have the clutch plates. Sometimes it helps to put a little oil on them to get them to stay. Next is going to be the clutch discs themselves. I'm going to start with this one here. Now there's an S on this. This is going to face the engine case. So that S right there. Everything I'm putting in, I'm going to dip in oil now. Next is going to be the clutch throw out. Just going to slide that in and then we just have the cover. This pretension ring here, it's very, very small, but it says top there. I'm going to face that to the outside. Next will be the spring washer. Next is the clutch spring retainer and there is some marks on these one, two, and three depending on the level of adjustment of the spring washer. I'm going to keep it on level two which is where it was before. I only have 60 hours on this bike so it should be fine. These screws I'm going to tighten in a crisscross pattern to 4.4 foot-pounds of torque. Next will be the nut for the primary gear. I am going to try to torque this as close as I can to 74 foot-pounds and it also requires blue thread locker. I can't seem to find my gear jamming tool so I have this extra transmission gear I'm going to try to use and just go lightly on it and see. Looks like it's going to work out. Again 74 foot pounds. Ready to put the clutch cover on. So there is a special process with this. Just to show you first, I do have the crank at top dead center. Right now I'm using a drill bit to hold it there. There's a notch in the crankshaft, which is really cool about the KTMs that allow you to lock the crank in the top dead center position. But also on the back of this balancer shaft, there's a timing mark as well. And there's a screw here that 
KTM does sell a special tool that will lock that shaft in place. I'm going to see if I can just get it the way it is without it moving, but I just have the dot pointed right towards that screw hole. Now I'm going to install this screw and it actually comes from the factory right there. That's what's really cool about KTM is they think in advance or Husky in this case, but this has a brass or copper washer on it usually. You just pull that out and once you thread this in here all the way down, it actually locks the crank perfectly in top dead center so it's not a guessing game, which is amazing when you are a mechanic and you're actually having to work on this. Just the thought process involved in that, like creating this screw, is pretty cool. And the crank is locked into place. All these screws I'm going to tighten in a crisscross pattern to 7.4 foot-pounds. Time to get the piston in the cylinder and on this piston there is a couple marks. There's an arrow mark and you can actually tell just by looking at the piston where it goes. The intake valves are larger, the exhaust valves are smaller, so this is the exhaust side. On the cylinder, I have it on the bench. Here is where the timing chain tensioner goes. So the exhaust side is here. And that's how the cylinder and piston are going to line up together. Now, there is a couple ring gaps on here. There's an oil ring and a piston ring, along with this little spring. That spring has to go underneath. Very important that it goes completely underneath all the way around. And that this oil ring and the piston ring are separated by 180 degrees. So I'm just going to alternate them. And then I'm going to use a piston ring compressor. Next is going to be the timing chain assembly. I'm just going to drop this in from the top and put it on the lower sprocket and just kind of set it there. There is a couple guides that guide this timing chain. This one on the bottom just helps it stay on the sprocket in the event that you have the cylinder or head off. It helps it from losing time or jumping a tooth. Just sets into place and it is going to get a bolt with Loctite and that's going to be tightened to 7.4 foot-pounds of torque. Next will be the rear timing chain guide. This is going to drop in from the top as well and then it's going to get one bolt down low and it'll be torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds and also use blue Loctite. Okay, with the rear in place, now it's time for the front one. The front one's just going to drop down from the top. There's a special little notch in it that will hold it in place on the engine case. There is no bolts with that one. Time for the cylinder and piston installation. I'm going to hold the timing chain taut. Try to. First is going to be the base gasket. I have a couple rags in here to keep the circlip from falling down into the crankcase in the event that I don't get it on the first try. Here I'm lowering the cylinder and piston together as a unit. I have the wrist pin halfway installed into the piston already so I can just push it into place and I'm going to follow that up by the circlip for the piston and this thing will be all ready to lower down in. Time to pull the rags out and drop this jug into place. When I'm lowering this down, I'm just going to give it a slight rock back and forth. There are two dowels that line the cylinder up in place, so just slight movement on it and then it should just sit right down where it's supposed to sit. Next is going to be the oil pump assembly and on this there is a dot that is going to face the engine case. 
Next is going to be the impeller for the oil pump. This is going to face the engine case, the dot that's on it. There is a dowel pin that holds it in place, so just a little guidance and it should go right in. I'm going to follow this up with the gear sensor. There's two bolts that hold this in place and I am going to blue Loctite them and torque them to 4.4 foot pounds, followed by the oil pump cover assembly. It's also a guard for the gear sensor. Those are also going to get blue Loctite and torqued to 4.4 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the clutch push rod and there is a flat side of this, also a round side. The round side is actually going to face the clutch itself. Time for the slave cylinder. Just kind of rocking it back and forth. I'm also going to torque these to 7.7 .7 foot pounds. Before I put the head on, I have to install these bearings, but I wanted to show you a puller that I made to help me out. This bearing right here is a blind bearing, so without a, a special puller, it's kind of hard to get out. What I ended up doing was I bought some half inch all thread. I had my slide hammer from my other bearing puller. And then I actually took two washers and I shaped it to the profile of the inside. I had to kind of notch it out, but it worked great. And then I had one washer right here to clamp it down. That grabbed the bearing and I just slide hammered it right out. Getting down to the last of it finally, now it is time to install the head gasket and the cylinder head followed up by the rocker arms and just have to time it after that and it's pretty much done. So the head gasket, I'm going to start with that. There is only one way that this thing will go on, just so you know. And I'm just going to make sure that it's seated nicely on the pins. These things are pricey. I think I paid like 65 bucks for this head gasket in 2021. Have the cylinder head here all cleaned up, ready to go. I'm going to set that on and then we're going to drop the head bolts in. The head bolts need to be tightened to 39 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the valve shims. Now I labeled these before I took them off. It's important that if you didn't do anything with the head that these go back on exactly the same way they came off. They are different sizes. So I labeled them and I'm going to put them exactly how they were. I'm going to oil them up to put a little oil on top of the valves before I set them in. There is one more screw here I need to put in. That's going to be 7.4 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the intake rocker arm. Now there is some markings on it. There is a mark on this pin here. You can see a little dot. Hopefully you can see that. That's going to face up. I need to lubricate this and this inside before I put that in.
On the exhaust side, rocker arm shaft, there is no orientation. The holes are the same, and those holes are for oil flow to go in. So I'm just going to set that one in there. Gonna snug these down using a 10 millimeter and then before I completely tighten them up, I actually need to use a feeler gauge on this and make sure we're at four thousandths of an inch right there. You want a little bit of gap going back and forth. Camshaft is next. There is a timing mark right here. That's the dot that lines up with this dot here. And again, that's what's nice about these KTMs is I have the crank locked at top dead center using the crank lock tool. I'm just going to put this in and make sure that dot is lined up. Next is this plate here which holds the camshaft in place and this bolt for that is going to get loctited at 7.4 foot-pounds. Time to install the timing chain tensioner. It's a nice simple design. It's got a little lever that you push to relax that all the way. When it's installed, it needs to be in the all the way back position. There is a spring that holds this in place, but I need to get the bolts in here first and then follow it up with the spring and the bolt that holds the spring in place. This spring is very simple how it works, but just kind of push it in there and then once you get the bolt started, it'll hold itself in there. It's just very easy to lose, let's just say that. Next I'm going to remove the crank locking bolt and put the washer back on. Really cool little feature on these KTM and Huskies. Next is the starter assembly. Now I did put a little bit of grease on the o-ring for the starter. It's just going to pop right into place and I'm going to follow that up with two bolts and they are not going to get Loctite but they will get torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds of torque. Time to put the flywheel on. It's important that both surfaces are wiped clean of oil to ensure a perfect true alignment. This is going to be followed up with a spring washer and then the nut. Now the nut's going to get torqued to 44 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the flywheel cover. It's a little oily. I'll wipe it off once I get it on. But there's two little dowels that it's going to line up on. So I'm just kind of guiding it on. The magnet will help pull it into place, but I just want to make sure that the gasket's where it should be. Okay, once that's on, the screws are going to get tightened to 7.4 foot-pounds. Alright, time for the oil filter. What I'm going to do beforehand though is fill this up as much as I can. The book says I think one third full, but just going to put some oil in there. 
Ah, oh, forgot the pull cap on the oil bottle. Let's try this again. Alright, this thing is pretty much done. The last thing I have to do is put the valve cover on, but I wanted to show you, I like to use a little bit of silicone on here because the last time I had my oil start leaking right here. So I'm going to do a little bit of three bond around this thing and then put that valve cover on and this thing is all complete. Got to put these cam caps in and then the spark plug and then this thing is completely done. So I'm just going to snug these up. And on this spark plug I like to use a little bit of never seize on the threads. Uh, motor builder told me about that one time and it seems to help out. You don't want that thing to get stuck in there. So just a little bit of never seize. motor is all complete. I hope you all enjoyed this video. The main reason I made this was because I couldn't find anything out there like this and hopefully it helps you out with your FE501 or your KTM 500 EXC. Comment below if there's anything you think I should have done differently or any tips and tricks to help the next person along. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this.